Um, hi, I see a couple of people here that I that I do recognize. So thank you for coming. Um, I think there are more people that registered, so more people are going to be coming as we get started. And uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to share my share my screen with you and and go through um, slides today, and you know talk through it as be as best we can. There will be breaks. Uh, couple of times in the presentation where uh, we'll take questions. Um, the best way, if, if I'm covering something and you have a question about it, uh, the best way to make sure that that question doesn't get forgotten um, is put it right into the chat. And Angela is going to be watching the chat. And uh, when we get to the questions slide, then Angela could ask those questions for you or we can open it up to the room at, the, at that time. Okay. Um, so let me share my screen, if I can find all the instructions here. It's not great working with a new computer to make presentations. <laughs> here we go. So if I share my screen, okay, so you should be able to see this, which is just the introductory slide that tells you what we're going to be covering. So if you came here to talk about job search portfolios, you're in the right place. If you came here to talk about resumes, that's going to come later in December. So you should you should check back. There's a great calendar that the library has. Uh, what I want to do is introduce myself. Uh, <clears throat> I'm David Robbins. I am a job search trainer. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, I'm a coach. Uh, I'm a speaker at organizations. Uh, I've been a trainer for a few decades, actually. But for the past 15 years or so, I've been focused on uh, job search skills training. So uh, that's where I come to the library and do these presentations. Um, I do presentations on LinkedIn, a job search for people over 50, uh, also uh, for, for different components of, of job search, including uh, putting together um, uh, putting, putting together the materials that you need, all the marketing materials that you need for uh, putting together your job search, improving your job search. So that's me. Um, Let's get right into the, the content and the topic, and that is a portfolio. Um, a professional portfolio is putting together your work so that it documents and shows what it is that you could do. Now, we know that what we usually have is um, a resume, right, and a cover letter. And in the in the resume, if it's well written, we're giving a lot of information. If you're using um, star stories, you're you're saying here's what uh, what the what the project was, here's what I did, and here's what it finally accomplished. So you're going to give uh, situation, uh, actions, and results, and that that says a lot about you. But if you take it one more step and actually show what you've done, that is the purpose of a portfolio. So the collection of your work and documents, and it actually then can show, hey, here's the, the work that I've actually done. Um, so it's work samples, projects, training that you've taken could also be part of it. There's a, a number of different things that could be in the portfolio. And I will show you a few sample portfolios uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, the thing that's important is as you're pulling together all this material, uh, to say, okay, here's everything that I've done. You get to choose the best work to display. And you want to do that sometimes customizing it for what you're looking for at the moment. And that's going to be real important because um, I could put together a portfolio showing um, I was a yoga instructor. They don't care about that if I'm looking for a job as a trainer, a uh, corporate trainer. So there are a number of things that you want to do, but it's good to pull all your projects together because you can, can never tell when something like that could be helpful. 
different types of portfolios. I think what people usually think of as portfolio, um, at least in my day, and I'd be older than some of you here in the room, um, uh, a portfolio is paper. Okay, so it could be in a three ring binder, or it could be in, uh, you've seen people who are going to art class and they have that large uh, portfolio bag. Um, and it, it, uh, it, would, it would carry all of their work for display. Because the idea of a portfolio is not just that it sits someplace, but you want to make it available and you want to display it in the best way you can. So paper portfolios are things that you could actually bring to an interview. And I have had clients that would actually do that. And they would you do it in a three ring binder or, or a presentation binder. Um, online portfolios are things that you can send in advance. Or you could actually link them to your LinkedIn profile. So when people can see who you are and what you do, you could have a link there that takes them to your portfolio and they could see more of what you've actually done. Um, I, I know I have a number of clients that are in tech that um, that link their GitHub app to their LinkedIn profile. Um, so the idea is putting together all of your, your material, but material that's able to be displayed, right? So you're going to either put it in a website, a blog, or different portfolio applications that I'll talk about. So those are the different types of portfolios that are out there that people make use of. Uh, now, again, mo most people think of portfolios for creatives, right? People in the arts, people who are designers, uh, and, and it's true. I mean, that's really the ones that were uh, making the most use of professional portfolios. But portfolios can be used for any kind of industry that you're in, um, many different options. And I put this uh, all on the next slide. Um, I, I took this off a, a wonderful website that I found, but um, for artists, of course, photos of their paintings, their illustrations. Um, but no one thinks of a chef or a baker having a professional portfolio. But it's um, if if a, a chef is looking for a, a job in a really top notch uh, restaurant, um, it wouldn't be a bad thing to actually have photos of the creations that they've done, particularly bakers, because bakers are usually working in something beautiful. So um, designers, of course, trainers and facilitators can actually show the kind of work that they do, show the scripts that they work from, um, videos of themselves. Uh, when I got certified as a trainer, I had to not only finish surveys and take some uh, um, exams to show that I was a trainer, I actually had to videotape myself, show the video, but actually annotate the video to show here's what I was doing and why I was doing it. Here's why I asked this question. This is what it led to. So you can get into a lot of detail, and all of that can be done in a video. Uh, mechanics, uh, public relations specialists, all of these, teacher, teacher tailor, all of these can be um, useful to have a portfolio. OK, so I'm going to stop right here. And I didn't give a lot of time for you to uh, put questions in the chat. Does anybody have any questions about what a portfolio is before we get into actually showing you what portfolios are? Any other questions that brought you to this to this workshop? So There's no questions in the chat, but feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question or raise your hands. Yeah, why did you come to this to this session? What were you looking for? Because uh, I need a portfolio for my, the interviewing process. Ah, so you're going to use it in the interview. Absolutely. Okay. What what field are you in, Cristobal? Project management. OK. So what do you think you would put in a portfolio? Uh, the past uh, projects that I've worked on. OK. 
Great. Thank you for sharing that, Cristobal. Anybody else who uh, has a, a reason that you came to this session? Said, had an open hour and a half on a Tuesday morning. Okay. So, so yeah. Okay. So okay. someone uh, joined in saying that they're also in project management and trying to figure out what a portfolio looks like for that. Um, another patron uh, said that they're transitioning from project management, project program management to product management, and they're wondering whether they can use their volunteer work in their community in their profile to showcase how they pursue the leadership. Absolutely, you could definitely put it in your profile, but you could also. Uh, again, try to pull together some of that together to put together a portfolio. So let's talk a little more about why we're going to use a portfolio. So we talk a little bit about what a portfolio is. It's just pulling together all of your information and making it into uh, something you could display. Uh, why use it? Uh, this is where you provide evidence of work you've done. So it's one thing uh, to put it onto a resume. And again, as Crystal said, it's really good at an interview. Your resume is sometimes used in an interview where the hiring manager would point to something and say, oh, it says here you did this project. Tell me more about it. Um, you could actually jumpstart that by having some of that information in a portfolio that they could see in advance. Um, and that's why it's nice to have it linked to your resume because then they look at your resume and they click on that and also see your portfolio. Now they have deeper questions for you and they're able to see the evidence that, oh yeah, you said you did this, now I see that you did it. Um, it demonstrates your skills, your abilities. It also shows the quality of your work. What you don't wanna do is put together something that's haphazard. You wanna work on a portfolio so it looks really top notch, it looks very professional. Um, the 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 one of the best answers to why you use a portfolio, visual examples are definitely stronger than describing your work. So you could describe it. When you're describing your work, many times somebody is putting an image together in their head. Uh, give them the image by putting it into a portfolio. So visual aids, more persuasive than those uh, that are without a visual aid. Um, and just the fact that you put a portfolio together is giving a message to the hiring manager, the recruiter, that um, you take your work seriously. You've done this seriously. And you've actually prepared in advance. So all of that information is there in advance for you. Now, again, um, most portfolios that people are comfortable with are the portfolios for creatives. Um, and we want to make sure that software engineers, developers also understand a good portfolio is vital for their job hunting success. And I'll give you some resources for that. Uh, if you heard the phrase, the proof is in the pudding, the pudding is actually your portfolio. So I took this from careerfoundry.com, and I'm actually going to give you a link to a website at careerfoundry.com that actually is specifically targeted to tech portfolios. So um, uh, how many of you are here uh, and you're looking for work in a tech position? Okay, the best thing to do is if you could raise your hand, if you could raise your hand and do a thumbs up and if you look at the, um, the reactions tab, I got, a, I got one hand up. I got a couple of thumbs up. Okay, I just wanna make sure, cause I did put in stuff here, particularly for tech. I wanna make sure I, I have people that I'm speaking to. Okay, I, I do see a question in, in, um, in the chat that I want to take right away. Uh, when should you show your portfolio um, to the hiring manager or recruiter? And I really do believe that it's a great way 
to use your portfolio is actually to put the link to your portfolio right in the contact information of your um, of your resume. So you'd have your LinkedIn profile and you'd have your portfolio link. Okay. Do you bring it also to an interview? Absolutely. So you can actually have it there if you bring uh, on your own laptop. You could actually have it ready on your laptop and take them through the portfolio. Okay. Um, yeah, the question goes on to say, should you link it in, in your thank you email? Well, if you gave it to them in advance, you don't need to also link it in your thank you email. But some people have their portfolio as part of their signature bar. So it goes out with every email. And that depends how you how you are using email in your um how you're using email in your job search. Okay. So we covered that question about tech. Let's go on and talk about how to create a portfolio. Um, the, the key here is, uh, and I gave you a reference at the bottom of the slide, um, you want to research portfolio platforms. And I'll give you a, a, some links to different portfolio platforms. Um, but many times, it's simply a good um, web platform. Wherever you're going to put together your own web page, that might be good enough to do use for your portfolio. Um, the key is in creating your portfolio, just like you would do when you're getting ready to put together your resume, put together all of your work. And in the case of a portfolio, think of the examples of your work. Um, and then when you pull all that together, pick out the ones that are best examples of your expertise. And also uh, look for the ones that would be most visual because you want to make it visual so that they could actually see what it is that you're doing. And, um, and it, it's always good to have that visual proof. And then you're going to choose the best way to display your work. And that, that again, depends on how you're going to put together your web page or your portfolio page. Okay, so um, portfolio website builders. Um, I, I took this from Forbes, uh, Forbes Advisor. Um, GoDaddy, and I, I left their comments. They say that that's the best overall portfolio website builder. Um, I'm sure that uh, GitHub might have a, uh, an argument for that, but it's 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 something that that um, that Forbes said. Um, uh, Weedly has pre-made templates for putting together a portfolio. Square, Squarespace is good for creatives. Um, creatives, I mean, um, uh, artists, um, uh, theater people, dancers, those kinds of things. Um, Wix has really good uh, intuitive options. So Wix is good for any website you're going to design. It also works well for portfolios. Um, some people who create blogs, um, if you're going to display your blogs, WordPress seems to be best for displaying blogs. And then I added just a number of other things that I know people in tech use, GitHub, Netify, CodePen, Stacklets. So all of those are uh, available for you to investigate. And you could also go to the, to the website for Forbes Advisor. So I have um, sample portfolios. Um, and uh, let me take you through, let me take you through these. I think that you'll get an idea of how different they are and how different people use them in different ways. So Christy Hines um, actually put it together uh, like using WordPress. Elegance Themes launches uh, AI tools for WordPress. And this is her website, How to Find Remote Jobs with Jack, Chat GPT. So she's showing you how she handles her blogs, um, things she talks about. And she's showing you these. And if you click on these, and I'm not going to 
take you down into the depth. But if you click on these, you'll see um, the uh, presentation she made with each of these. 800 chat sheet. This is all being updated live. So I haven't actually seen this different version than what I've seen before. So this is her portfolio, which is actually her website. Okay. Um, it also shows that she has her own um, branding. So people could see, you know, what, what she's done and, uh, and the tweets that she's put out there. Let me see if I can get back the slide set. Uh, Mimi is a designer. <clears throat> Mimi, uh, I met when I worked at JVS. Um, and uh, she was very active in getting ready to do a job search and then um, shared with us her web page, which was actually how she was searching for clients when she was on her own. Now she's working full time. So she actually put in here, I'm not accepting clients, but happy to connect you with other great talent. And here she showed the different things she's done. Presentation design, book report design, social media, publicity design. And she puts together a number of visual um examples of the kind of work she's done for people and this is she used uh squarespace for this so you can see very different one showed all of her blogs uh mimi is showing her work uh, basically on a one page but each one of these are clickable and take you down into further information that she has Um, I have to show you my daughters. Is that okay? <laughs> if I get personal here. Um, um, my daughter was uh, interested in fashion design. So uh, she went to school for fashion design, has a degree in fashion design. She's now uh, associate designer for Ann Teller's Loft brand. Um, but she's still networking. And it's interesting when she does talk to people, uh, she says, well, yeah, I've done a number of projects and they usually, what, what she told me that they say to her is, uh, yes, I've seen your portfolio or I've seen your web page. So let me take you to Zoe's portfolio. Again, very different. Uh, no text. Okay. But each one of these is clickable and it'll take you into her projects. So again, um, yes, you know she she would be considered a creative, but you notice that it's very different from the other portfolio. So I'm trying to show you that there are all different ways that you can put together a portfolio. There's not one portfolio format. The idea is, um, what's the best way for you to display your work? So you saw basically three creatives: the the blog poster. Um, the uh, designer who designs presentation design, and this is uh, in fashion design. And you could, I'm going to take you in, in deeper into one of these, and that is, this is the uh, project she actually did for her graduation project. And um, it actually, the, the text is now coming up where it says, this is what I did. This is my lookbook which is what fashion designers do. Here's what I took my ideas from. And she designed her project around uh, the fact that most of the women in the 1900s did not appear in photos. Uh, she found one photo of women, but uh, military or work, uh, mostly it was men. So her design was about women using that kind of style. And then she showed you where she took a lot of her design thoughts from. And then she 
went into the sketching. So here she's trying to show her skill set. So one, well, here's here's my design sense. Here's my skill set. Here are the sketches. Here's what I wanted to put in here as my theme. Some of you might recognize this quote. She was warned. She was given an explanation. Nevertheless, she persisted. This is when um, Senator Warren was thrown out of a meeting, and uh, they made this this, uh, this set of quotes very famous. And she actually put this. Um, uh, Zoe Robbins actually put this into her um, into her design. So into the actual. Uh, uh, project that she put together and the clothing that she made. So she went from the theme to the sketching to where she was going with this, what, what her thought process was, into taking the sketching and starting to actually formulate the different designs. And then the projects where she made the clothing and had models actually modeling the clothing. So this is what we mean by um, actually showing rather than telling. She could say, I designed five pieces. Here she could show the pieces that she designed. And I guess we don't need to go through all, <laughs> all the pieces. Uh, point being that each one of these does the same thing, where it starts with, um, here's what I thought about. Here's the way I put it together, which is the way designers work, particularly in fashion. But actually, they work that way um, even if you're designing websites for people. OK, now um, I look for things that I figure people in this room might be more interested in. Um, this was uh, a UX design portfolio. And she made it very personal, right? Um, I, I design products and brands. I support, what was the other word? I research. So she did that. She has her resume attached. Uh, and a couple of the others also attached their resume to the portfolio. We talk about attaching the portfolio to the resume through a link, um, you could actually do it the other way too, because some people come to the portfolio or the web page, and then it, you could take them to your resume. And then here, view the projects, but here she's giving more of her thought process, the way she's going to work, um, UX design, research, branding, digital strategy, and then she has different projects, and she put together a few uh, feature projects. So um, this is uh, UX UL product design. And she put together the project here. So this is all prototype, so she doesn't have depth. She's just showing different things that she's done. Um, she also has a prototype video that you can attach a video to your portfolio also. Again, uh, you know, if someone introduced themselves with, hi, I'm Gloria Lowe, design, sing, paint, and write. And then redesigning the ads management experience. So here, uh, front end design. And then let's connect. So she has the projects here. Rocket platform redesign. She explains what she did, the product designer, the background, and the process that she used. Discover, define, ideate, and implement. So she's giving you her background and her understanding and her expertise. Right. So research before uh, before uh, Rocket even hired a product design team, 
So you need to understand what the problem was, putting together your research, um, and then actually uh, getting more into what would look like project management. Um, how is she going to put this together? Priorities of issues. And did a whole scoring, narrowing the scope of the work. So you can see the depth that she did, and then wireframing the solution. So these are available, all clickable in the um, in the, the slide set that you're going to get at the end of this. Sorry, the words aren't coming out this morning. So that was Gloria Lowe. Um, Patrick David, I think, is also um, front end design. Creative designer developer. So developer UX UI designer based in Italy. And um, a little humor there. His name is David, but he's not this David. Um, and here he has selected cases, which is interesting. As I said earlier, you want to pull all your material together. You only want to choose the ones that are going to show you in the best light. So these are the ones that are selected. UX design and development, UX UI design and development. <clears throat> Showing you the different work you did. And then a contact me, which is really important to have as part of your portfolio, because some people are going to come to your portfolio, not necessarily to a resume to get to your portfolio. So you want to have contact information built into the portfolio. Um, uh, again, a link to your resume would be fine if you have a generic version of your resume. And then he has also um, a link to other cases if people want to learn more about the work that he's done. And I went searching for somebody who was back end, not just front end. Um, so this is uh, Tamal Sen, software engineer. So front end app developer and software engineer. Just go down. Here's his expertise. Software development. Talking about the languages that he can code in. And then his work, his featured project, Tyratel app, so he built an app. This is, uh, I, I thought this was interesting. This is um, a travel app, which will take you through um, uh, booking and grabbing your information to share. So again, he was designing a mobile app for Tyratel. And you can see examples of it, the scope. And this is really important, particularly for um, particularly for people in tech, show how you got to the work that you're displaying. So um, minimal illustrations were used to design, and he's actually showing how he built the project up in pieces. Okay. Next project, Urban Thinkers Consulting Firm. Again, he's giving you information that he was able to use there. And he has that for software development front end and uh, the material that he developed for uh, Android and iOS. OK, so those are the sample portfolios. Um, let me get back into the slide set. 
there are many more sample portfolios that are out there. Um, what I did was try to put together all these references rather than us um, going through this material uh, a piece at a time. And um, I felt that it would be better for me to show you. Here's the reference material that I've been using and I'm making it all available to you. So balanced careers, what is a professional portfolio? Um, the balanced careers is one of my go-to for job search in particular. Uh, career one stop, also talking about job search and resumes and then portfolios. Um, uh, livecareer.com, another great website. And then um, I thought that this was interesting, the undercover recruiter, um, five reasons why all job seekers need to have a work portfolio. Let's see if I can, we can bring this one up. So I have a couple of resources with Undercover Recruiter. Um, and I thought this was interesting, right? The way that people have searched for jobs in the past is, is not the same. Uh, even the idea of um, answering job ads. Uh, a lot of people are still going into uh, job boards, looking for jobs that are available out there. Um, it would be great if you go to networking events, put together a professional brand, and actually start showing that to people, uh, which is, is very much akin to informational interviewing. If you're going to just talk to people inside organizations and then say, by the way, I have a portfolio that I'd like to show you, and you could actually just give them the link to that. Uh, all job seekers should have an updated work portfolio in their arsenal, which is their toolkit for job search. Work portfolios tell the story of who you are, where you came from, what you want to achieve, but it also shows that here's the work that I've done. So this article goes on to explain why portfolios are necessary. Um, it, it definitely makes you stand out from people who are sending in resumes and cover letters, or just resumes and no cover letters. Um, but this is, I think, what's really important. Uh, and I tell this to people, even when you're writing a resume, uh, there are things on your resume, even though it's all text, um, there are things in the resume that stand out, which is why I tell people in a resume, use numbers, right? If you saved a company um, $1,000 a week because of your project, you don't write, the words 1,000, you actually put the number 1,000. That's visual. So there's the minuscule visual you could do. In a portfolio, it's blatantly visual. So that's where you can really sell yourself. So images, videos, graphics, relay information better than script. So um, again, it's a great way to stand out because they're looking at, they're looking at resume after resume after resume. It's almost um, uh, comfortable to <laughs> change from looking only at resumes to actually looking at portfolios and websites. Um, sharing your current goals and progress. A work story means storytelling. So, um, and then more information from the un undercover recruiter. Um, I also wanted to share um, a bit of this YouTube with you. I even started to notice some of the hair growing back at the end. Not this one. Bottom. This is just the ad, so bear with me. Let's get rid of that. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a winning portfolio for your job search in the tech industry. Hi, my name is Joan, and I'm a program manager working in big tech. I've been in the industry for about for over a decade, and I've mentored a lot of techies. When starting out your career as a newbie in the tech industry, one of the potential challenges you face is demonstrating your ability to deliver. A great way to solve this problem is by highlighting this. I'm going to take you past some of his intro into the material he's actually going to talk about. Identify your strengths. Having a strong portfolio starts by taking stock of your assets. Can you see this video, by the way? 
Do you hear him speaking? Talents and abilities to ensure yes. you showcase yourself Great. in the best possible way. Technical and core skills like software development, product design, data analysis, DevOps, etc., are the key reason why an employer is interested in you in the first place. But your soft skills and personality are what will set you apart from other candidates, and a great portfolio should typically highlight those. How do I do this, you ask? Well, if you have great design, organizational, and communication skills, your portfolio should reflect that. Pro tip, include a short video about yourself on your portfolio landing page, uh, and that could be a great way to really show your personality. Step two, gather your projects. The next step in creating an impressive portfolio is by gathering all your hard work and successes into one place. Take the time now to assemble everything you've accomplished so that it can be used to showcase your talent to your prospective employers. This should include personal projects, volunteer work, and literally anything you've had a hand in creating. Step three, choose a platform. Once you're done gathering up all your projects, you have to showcase them to the world. You want all those projects to be in one accessible online location where an employer can easily go through everything, while some people go as far as creating entire websites from scratch so they can showcase their work. There are other less involved ways to do it. There are tons of websites and free templates you can use to achieve the same results. Although going the extra mile of building an actual website from scratch may help in some contexts, especially if you're a software engineer, since doing so shows that you're actually good at the job you're applying for. Some reliable portfolio builders include Squarespace, Wix, Wibbly, GitHub, and Dutta. If you're looking for some inspiration before creating your own page, uh, then take a look at some of the portfolios made by some big names in the tech industry. I'll link them in the description below. Feel free to do your own research and choose whichever site or style that suits your needs and best fits your budget. Step four, create your portfolio. Now for the most important part, actually building your portfolio, here are some things you should do. Make it visually appealing. Give your portfolio that others can see and understand what exactly you worked on. Personalize your portfolio as best as you can. It could be a logo with your name on it or a custom editor showcasing a collage of all the work you've done so far. Another tip is to showcase your best work. It's natural to want to bombard those viewing your work with all of the content, but sometimes less is more. So it's best to add only important stuff and do away with the rest. I just want to add, I think one thing that's really important that he said, and that is, <clears throat> If you can brand yourself, the idea of having your own logo, um, or or at least customize the heading of the portfolio. So um, uh, it, it could it could just be your name, but the idea of putting together some kind of branding that says this is this is who I am and this is the kind of things that I do. This will vary on a case to case basis, but if you work in a field where the volume of work is high, for example, technical writing. <laughs> best to attach only what you consider the best, essentially putting your best foot forward. Here's what you should consider uh, adding to your portfolio. Personal and open source projects, professional projects, group projects, blogs, and product clones. And last but not least in creating a great portfolio is to write a profile. It's possible to get your page design looking great and your projects posted on your page while forgetting to tell the recruiters about yourself. A bio on your web page is important to let the recruiters know who you are as a professional and as a human being. Here are some tips on what to include in your bio. Your academic qualifications, including degrees, certifications, and courses. Your past professional experience, including internship, volunteer work, or even personal projects like a website or blog. A standout project that you want highlighted for recruiters to see your field of interest and a brief descriptions of your skills, especially your soft skills. 
try to make your bio brief and not too technical as your projects will cover that for you. Include contact information and links to your social media like Twitter, LinkedIn, which can potentially also showcase your professional experience. Step five is maintaining and keeping your, pro, your, your portfolio site up to date. Whenever you complete a new project, ensure to add it to your portfolio. With time, your portfolio bulks up and becomes more impressive as it grows. As I mentioned earlier in the video, don't be afraid to add a personal touch as it makes potential recruiters connect more with you on a personal level. There are many elements to an effective job start strategy, and a good portfolio might just be a difference maker for you. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification. Okay, you'll have a you'll have the link to this uh, video if you want to subscribe. You want to hear from him more. Um, but I, I really, when I found this video, I thought I would just share it with you for the six minutes. Um, one thing that uh, I wanted to add to what he said, the, where do you get your projects from? So this is the link to that to that YouTube. Um, where do you get your projects from? Some people who are right now not working, um, you're gonna pull together all of your old projects that you've done in the past or the information that you've done, that you've had in the past. Um, but you might also put together a project in a course that you're taking. So if you're you know, taking a course in UX design, you can do a project from it, you can put that project right into the same um, portfolio. Also, if you're volunteering, it doesn't have to be, well, it's called a professional portfolio, but you're showing your professional skills, but the things that, you've, that you do as a volunteer. So you might put together um, a website for, um, for a, a church, for a synagogue, for a nonprofit that you're working with. Um, that also is a project that you could put right into your portfolio. So all of those things work. Um, another reference that I have here, um, and the last one, and this one, again, particularly for uh, software engineering, um, Career Foundry, Web Development Software Engineer Portfolio. But this is uh, tells you how to put together the portfolio, but also there are 24 examples of tech portfolios. Um, so one other, let me stop sharing for a second. Um, one other thing that I, I think is, is important is um, what he said about finding your best work, putting together your best work. And also when you're updating that portfolio, you have a new project. Um, it's not just, oh, I have a new project, I'll add it. You can say, well, is this project worthy of my portfolio? And if this project is a great, fantastic project, I wanna put it where it would be most viewed in the, in the web page or in the portfolio structure um, but I might want to also take other projects out. And as you saw in one of the shop projects that I showed you, um, or one of the sites that I showed you, he actually has a link to other projects. So you could actually have your portfolio as the prime work that you've done. Other projects that you've done that you think are still worthy of people seeing it, you might want to put that into a link into a, a secondary site for that. So there are some other ways to do that. Now, creatives do the same thing. So um, the woman who is the fashion design, um, every time she applied for a position in, uh, in a fashion company, um, they would give her a project. So she applied to the Gap. And they said, um, uh, that's great, great screening interview, great first interview. Um, before the the, inter the next interview, we'd like you to design socks for children that would come into the gap. Um, and then she had to show the whole project and she would show it to them and she didn't get hired, right? 
But that's still a project she created. She owns that. So she actually put that into a secondary area of her um, of her portfolio. So that if people want to see other projects, she could show you something that she did for the gap and something that she did for um uh I can't remember now all the, the, the other sites, but there are four other projects that she's done. And it was also one project that she did that was not um, that was not in fashion design, but in product design. So again, showing her design skills all into a portfolio. Okay. Um, before we do a kind of little summary, uh, are there any questions that came up in the chat, Angela? Yes, there was quite a few from the previous section. Um, uh, someone asked, I'm in education. I feel comfortable with what I, what items to include, but I am wondering about the best format. I've always had a physical portfolio, but are the best practices for multimedia virtual portfolios too? The easiest way to, to get that to people is something that is virtual multimedia. Um, as as an educator, for me, um, you know, putting together a, a portfolio would actually be um, the, the courses that I've taken, the reviews that, that I've gotten, um, the um, studies that I've done on what was the result of a particular class, meaning how much did they learn? So um, taking a look at what in in training, uh, I don't not so much in uh, in education K to twelve or even college education. You could do it on grade point average, but uh, for corporate training, it would be some kind of return on investment that you would do after the training is done. So um, there are different ways to show all of that. Uh, and again, if you can get someone to videotape some of the some of the upfront skills that you're showing in delivering content, that would be really important. Um, your, the plan that you've come up with, the curriculum, the syllabus, those are things that you would share, particularly if there are ones that you created yourself. Um, and that would be really important. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, David. Um, there's another question asking, can a portfolio show your overqualification? Okay. Um, oh, there's a wonderful job search um, uh, uh, phony word. It, I, you know, I, I just hate the idea of overqualified. Uh, I don't understand what overqualified means. Um, if I were hiring somebody and I said, you should have um, skills to do this job, and the skills are A, B, and C. And when I'm talking to somebody, they have skills in A, B, C, D, E, and F. I wouldn't, as a hiring manager, I wouldn't say, oh, you, you're no good here. You're overqualified. You have too many skills. It doesn't make any sense. So overqualified is something that is used as a way to, um, a way for the hiring manager or recruiter to say, um, you know, thank you very much for applying. We really think you're overqualified for this. You know, I would always question, can you tell me what you mean by overqualified? Um, many times they won't. But if they do, they'll say, well, the, you know, this, this position really is for someone who's just really starting out. Um, in which case, I would then pursue that too. Um, well, actually, you know, I've been away, as you see from my resume, I've been away from this for a while. I really am looking for a position where I'm going to be starting out again, but I think I'll be able to get up to speed more quickly than somebody who does not have my qualification. In other words, you could always take it further and question what overqualified really means. Um, the idea here is you want to work for a company that wants your skill set. Um, and if they think that we don't want this skill set, we want something less, you don't want to work there because what they're going to do is misuse you. Um, keep looking, you'll find a better job. 
Thank you for that, David. Um, you had mentioned about showing your the portfolio on Zoom interview. Someone's asking, how would you show your portfolio during a Zoom interview? Can you just use screen share? Yeah, just as I did. You and you would say, um, I I have my I have my portfolio available to show you because uh, they're talking to you about projects or something in an interview, and it, it, I think it would, it would be. Um, uh, almost exciting for them <laughs> to, to do something different for uh, a candidate to actually say, you know, I have a project here in my portfolio. Can I bring it up in, in SlideShare? Can I just share my, my screen? Um, and if they say, well, we don't really have time for that. You say, okay, well, I'll, I'll provide my portfolio to you, um, you know, when we're done. But the idea of right there, if you could share your screen and show the project you would they were asking about and they were talking about, you're gonna really beef up that interview. That makes that interview so much more exciting. Now, again, not all interviewers care. That's not, they're, 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 they have their little sheet. They can just ask you those questions and you just have to get through them as best you can. But it would be good to uh, have available and you should have it available um, in a, a web page that you could easily access, or if you're going to bring, if it's a live presentation and you're going to bring your laptop with you, it should be not something you need to search for, but it's sitting there right on your desktop. But yes, definitely could do it by share by uh, screen share. Thank you, David. Um, someone had asked, is it unprofessional to use free portfolio site or level such as Weebly or Wix in the URL? Well, it, it, it wouldn't be good to do that if you're applying for a software engineering job where your job is going to be creating websites, right, from scratch. Um, in which case, as, as um, the, the speaker in the video said, you want to actually create your own website to, to display your portfolio. Um, but if you're, uh, you know, uh, front end, or if you're in fashion design or anything else, yes, using Wix, Weebly, um, uh, my my provider is Ioness, uh, in in uh, I believe they're in Germany. So there are all different um, platforms that you could use to host your your portfolio, um, and uh, you saw Foursquare being used. That that's not unprofessional. That that's that's what they're there for. The idea is they don't care so much about the platform that you're using it. They, what they want to see is the work that you've done. And again, you you get extra points if you can actually create your own platform. So um, that would be interesting. I'm not I'm not that technical to really understand all of that. <laughs> but in everything I've read, uh, that's a little bonus. But Thank nothing you. wrong with using Wix, Weebly. Uh, GitHub is where a lot of my clients have been kind of storing projects that they've been working on. Um, and then making those, you can make the, the projects in GitHub available also. Thank and you, David. Um, someone's asking how would, I'm, not, I'm assuming they're asking how would a fish, uh, positions do a portfolio? A physician. Yeah, doctors. The doctor. Um, I, I can imagine the things that they would do, but mostly it would be, you know, uh, bio training. It would. It would mostly. It would be. It would be text. There wouldn't be a lot of visual that you could do. But if you put together a nice website with with um, if you um, if you did your internship at a particular um, hospital, uh, you could actually you know say my internship included such and such, so the text would be on one side of the page. A picture of a hospital would be on the other side of the page. Okay, um, and then if you were um, uh, you know working uh, toward you know becoming a surgeon you could actually have an operating room uh, as, as the visual. So you could do that, um, but 
you you know you can get kind of creative with it but mostly it's going to be what your background is what your training is what your experience is you know how many years you were in in this particular um uh, field of medicine or that particular field of medicine so um uh but yes you could still put it together uh into something that becomes almost a um uh, almost it would be actually a website Thank you, David. Um, someone's asking, what is a better way to showcase projects in another language? For example, social media content on my portfolio. Most of my experience is from another country, but I'm looking for a job in the United States. Um, if you took a look at the, um, uh, I think it was the Tamal Sen uh, link that we have on this one of the slides. Um, he showed uh, one of his projects in English, but then he showed projects that he worked on in in other languages. So there's nothing wrong with showing it. What you're what you're you're not asking them to use an application that you developed. You're showing them what the application does, so um, they could see what it does, even though they can't understand the language that it's written in. Um, if it's something where they need to know what what that's in, you would at the bottom of the page put in the uh, English translation. Thank you, David. Um, there's another question, but maybe we can wait to the end since it's um, talking about LinkedIn. <laughs> okay, I think I saw it. Do you need a photo of yourself? Was that the one? Yes. Uh, um, do you need a photo of yourself on your portfolio and your LinkedIn? Um, Okay, number one um, in in LinkedIn, yes, you need a you need a, a photo of yourself. Um, uh, have somebody take thirty five photos of yourself, headshot, right, shoulders up, and uh, and pick the one you like, um, and put it on there. Um, if you don't have a photo, recruiters will not look at your profile. So um, in the classes that I teach about profile, uh, LinkedIn profiles, um, <clears throat> I'm very clear to point out that you need to have a photo. Do you need a, need, need a photo of yourself on your portfolio? No, um, un, unless it's part of your branding, uh, but it's not necessary to have the photo on your portfolio. It is necessary to have the photo on your LinkedIn profile. Okay. Uh, someone put in, uh, Susan, Susan, you're here somewhere. Thank you for attending. Um, doctors can add information on board of directors they served on, nonprofits they worked in projects, um, and there are professional photographers that do headshots only. So there are different ways you could do that, but I thought that was really a good add for the question about physicians. Um, physicians don't only work um, doing their doctoring all the time. <laughs> they are also probably on boards of directors, working with nonprofits. Those are things you should definitely include. They should be included in, in your resume and they should actually be definitely be included on your um, portfolio. Thanks for helping out there, Susan. Any other questions? So I don't have I don't have much more. Let me share my screen again. If I can find um, let me share a screen. Here it is. Just a, basically a summary. Um, so the, the key points, the, the takeaways, I, I took these again from the undercoverrecruiter.com um, and enhanced them a little bit, but visual examples are stronger than describing your work. Um, visual definitely uh, trumps text. Um, the same principles of presentation apply to a job interview. Visual aids are more persuasive than those without. So the question of if I'm in uh, a Zoom call, can I show my portfolio? Definitely, and it would be, it would be, it would just make you stand out for sure. It also shows how well you prepared for that interview. Um, well prepared for portfolio to demonstrate the job seekers prepared. There you go. Just what I said. Uh, career portfolio can demonstrate you're well organized. Your abilities make you stand out as an as a, an applicant. 
Um, bringing something visual can make your interview more memorable. 55% um, of how we affect others is based on how we dress, how we act and behave. That's that uh, first impression. So the physical appearance of your portfolio is really important. And since people talk about the portfolio and they relate it to interviewing, I wanted to add a final thought. which is when you're gonna be going for your interview, don't think, oh, I put together my portfolio and I'm ready for my interview. Um, practice interviewing. Before you go into an interview, practice interviewing. And if you're gonna use your portfolio in the interview, practice how you're going to do it. Make sure it works right up front. Uh, it's not something that you can, you know, um, I can make mistakes here and I can show you the wrong slide. Uh, this is not a job interview. Um, I can fix it. In a job interview, you want those things to go really well. And that's where practice is really important. So practice interviewing with an accountability buddy or a mentor or an advisor uh, at least once and maybe multiple times. Um, if you're going to think of I mean, this going to be a Zoom interview, well, uh, you know, we, you can get your own Zoom account for free. Um, record yourself. What, what that interview would, would look like. Um, uh, you can ask yourself the question, answer the question. Ask yourself the question, answer the question. Show your portfolio, ask the question, answer the question. But the idea is show the, take a look at what you look like also on the screen. So um, yeah, the final thought really is for anything job search, research, prepare, and practice. That's what's going to happen. This is me, if you're interested. Um, my email address and my LinkedIn. But I, I'd like to say this. I said this in the last library presentation that I gave. Um, I would, if you're interested in connecting with me on LinkedIn, that would be great. But if you just hit the connect button and you get, I get that standard message that says, I'd like to add you to my professional network. Um, I, I won't respond. Uh, if you want to connect with me, go to my profile, hit connect, and then hit add a note, and let me know why you want to connect with me. I'd love to connect with you, but I want to know why before I hit accept. So if it was that this presentation was helpful to you, or one of my prior presentations which be, how it was helpful, that would be great, but just add the note, and then I would be happy to connect with you. Okay. And um, I think that's all I have. So uh, there are um, items in the in the chat. Um, if anybody has any other questions, you can unmute yourself and I'll take any other questions. Yes, it looks like John has a question. How do you maintain an online portfolio for work or content that is hosted and shown on other websites? Do I just screenshot it and add it to my website? Or, or link, link to that specific page. Yeah, but there's nothing wrong with screenshotting it and, and adding it to your website. But let them know where it came from. You know, what what is this all about? Thank you, David. There's no more questions in the chat. If anyone else have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself. Okay. If not, I think thank we you. can end the presentation early. Uh, thank you, David, for sharing information about what a I'm professional- I'm sorry, I was trying to oh. mute myself. I just had a question about, so there was so many great ideas and I, and I need to um, do the, do a whole one from scratch, start my portfolio from scratch. I'm asking where is the best place to go find examples or even use a template? Would that be on, um, what did you show us? You, you showed us. Um, yeah, was that Eva? Are you still there? I'm here. Okay. So 
Um, there are sample portfolios, and the sample portfolios will tell you where where they're hosted. Um, but here are the website builders. And uh, let me share my screen. I'm sorry. This is in the slide set for everyone. You will get this slide set. Angela will send the slide set out to you later today. Um, so here are portfolio website builders. And uh, the, the ones on the last bullet are ones that are used more for tech uh, portfolios. Um, but uh, it, all of these are, are available and more. There are lots of additional ones. So um, you can actually read this article by clicking on this link or uh, copying it and pasting it into um, your search bar. Um, but this is Forbes Advisor putting best portfolio website builders. So uh, do, um, you, do you off, off the cuff just know about how many pages do people usually have? Because I think your daughter had pages and pages of examples, but uh, what's the usual amount? My, my daughter actually has one page. That, oh, that's many, the page. That's like the landing page, right? And then each project has pages and pages because in design and fashion, there are you know 20 steps before you actually build your garment. So she's going to have 20 steps listed for each of those projects, but not all of them, um, not all of them have that. So um, uh, we go into her web page just because you referenced it. <clears throat> Can you see Zoe or Robbins? Yeah, it, okay. I guess it looked like you had different things. Um, these are all yeah, clickable. This is this is it. This is the page, right? Then she has, you know, this is her work, her projects, right? And if you click on that, here are other projects she's had, right? And if you click on anyone, you can view it. So something that she did for um, for Lane Bryant, and then she'll show you again her thought process the color scheme that she chose, and then the lingerie that she designed. That's what they had asked her to do. This was actually for um, a, um, a job interview. So um, those are the kinds of things that, that she put under projects. Um, this over here is all of her work. Um, this became different because this is not fashion design. This is product design. And uh, she, with a team, um, repurposed used wine bottles and then sold, actually created these concept um, uh, design, uh, put in the work, actually created the products and then sold them in stores in Cincinnati and put together a whole theme of here are the characters. That would be that would be using this kind of product and and built a whole story around it. Here's the design work of the product. Here is them making, cutting down and making the product. So here's a um, a wine pitcher and goblets. More goblets. Um, the top of the bottle became a shot glass. <laughs> so. Um, they did this and actually um, had a great time actually bringing the, those to markets in Cincinnati and selling them. But yes, it, it's pages and pages, but each one of them is is distinct. So no, it's not that somebody's going to see pages and pages. And even if you if you don't have pages and pages, um, that's okay. You know, just show what you have. But what they're really interested in is how did you get there? If I show if I show a website and say, here's a website I designed, but I'm looking for a position as um, a software engineer or, or a UX or UI designer, they want to know how did you get there? How did you, why did you design it this way? So you're going to have a page on your research that you did. You're going to have a page on um, uh, uh, forums that you might have had. 
So you're going to have, a, yes, you're going to have a number of pages to show how I got to my product. So I, I hope that helps. Don't think of it as yeah. overwhelming. Think of it as one step at a time. Come up with a project and then say, okay, how do I put this project together? And then put together the steps for that. And all of the steps could be on one slide. Did she, because, did your daughter have help to do all the images? No. But remember, she, she's in, you know, she's in design. So um, she actually, I don't know what, um, what her, she has an about, I'm sorry, we're focusing on my daughter, but that's what the question was. Uh, so she has her work and I, I don't know what um, format she used. Um, she has her LinkedIn. I don't, I don't know what platform she used, but it was a, it was, it's a design platform. Um, and so it did give her a little bit of a template to help her, but the pride, like, um, like these images, she, she just took them from, um, magazines, from other websites. Um, you know, they're standard images. Her work was her own. So she took a picture of her sketches and oh. then she had a project. But then you, you remember what, um, the speaker said in the video, um, he also, she also included her about, here's her bio, right? New York, San Francisco, um, as an innovative designer, I'm always researching trends, very brief, currently reside in Brooklyn, New York, op open to relocating. And, and then she has her contact information. Um, great way uh, to give contact information is to get contact information first. I'll give you my contact information if you tell me where I should send it. And that way you start building up more of, um, of your own network. Okay. I, I hope that helps, Ava. Uh, the other thing is to work with a mentor. You know, if you have an information interview with somebody who has, um, who has are built you, a- Are you available for mentor? I'm, I'm not because I'm not a specialist in actually developing portfolios. Um, I, if you again, if you connect with me on LinkedIn or send me an email, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can put you in touch with somebody. Okay. It's 1121. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Eva, for bringing that up. Any other yeah. questions? Yes, there's one more question. Um, they're asking, is it the same for marketing portfolio? Should I show all the steps in my projects? I don't, I'm not sure what you mean by a marketing portfolio. Um, what is it that you're marketing? If you're, if you're showing, here are marketing projects that I've done for companies that I've worked at. Um, yeah, then then you would show basically how did you do that? You wouldn't have to get into a lot of detail here because you're not showing you know sketches and then color design and all of that. But in in marketing, you're going to want to say, um, you know, I I, I put together um, a social media campaign for this restaurant. Okay. And here's the social media that I use. But why did you choose those? So you probably ask some questions. You probably did a little research. At least you want to show your research. Right? That's going to be helpful. So that shows them the skills that you have, that you 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 don't you don't just grab something off the internet, put it up and say, look, look what I did. Do you want to show them how you actually built it? So yeah, you could show your steps. It wouldn't be as much as what we've seen here with fashion design or even 
uh, you know, product design or UX design. Ah, so I got this now from uh, a marketing coordinator, but era before digital marketing, where do I show? Um, you didn't create the flyers, the brochures, web pages. Uh, you did the project management, then show the project management. Are you selling yourself as a marketing professional or a project management professional? Um, uh, you might want to show the project management that you did um, for the marketing project that you managed. And then show the work, like the flyers, the brochures, the booths that other people on the team created that were part of the project, the marketing project you managed. Okay, so I did presentations for international conferences at the Expo Hall. I did presentations um, in the in the content areas, but also in the Expo Hall, um, I would uh, actually do little presentations. I had a little microphone, little speaker, um, which probably bothered the the booth next to us, but that was okay. Um, uh, but I I didn't take any videos of it. But what I did, I would actually show, I could show the booth that I spoke at. Um, if someone took photos of me, that would be great. Um, but I could actually show, here's the booth that I did presentations at, at this conference, and I could show the conference banner. So I could show different things that would be visual about the fact that I made this presentation. If I have a video of the presentation, great. If I don't, I would talk about what the presentation was, where did it came, where did it come from, and what my point was. <coughs> um, again, yeah, there, there's a bit of cre creativity if you're trying to put together something visual. If you don't have anything visual, you're going to put together a text portfolio. But you can make it visual by just adding visuals to a page of text. So if you're talking about, um, again, the social media uh, campaign that you did, you could have a visual of, um, of a, 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 a cell phone, right? A mobile showing um, the, the site on it that you had your 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 marketing right your campaign so you can put visuals next to the text they can be generic they don't have to be what you actually did best i can do in this kind of environment the the, the key is look at other portfolios um Go on, go just do it. Do an, uh, um, an AI search or or a Google search, and 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 question um, uh, portfolios for marketing coordinators. You'll find stuff out there. Take a look what they have. If it's something that you like, use their format. Don't use their content. That's not good. Definitely use their format. Okay, I'm going to stop looking at chat because I know there are going to keep questions keep popping up. Uh, I'm going to turn this back over to Angela, a librarian who is running the show. Thank you very much, Angela, for allowing me to do this. Thank you, David, for even um, for showing us and sharing the information about the professional portfolio. I didn't know that anyone could make it. I always thought it was for arts or creative people. Um, like the myth. <laughs> I also I like to thank everyone. I, well, I expect yes, I expect you to put together a portfolio and show it to me. Oh, uh, a librarian <laughs> portfolio, and then I can use it in my next presentation. <laughs> sure, I'll try to do that. I'd like to thank everyone for joining. I hope you found this presentation informative for you. Uh, I'll be sending out a survey along with the link to the recording and a um, a copy of the uh, presentation slides as well.
Uh, if you guys could take the time to fill out the survey, that'd be great. Any feedback can help us improve in our programming and in the uh, uh, presentation. With that, good luck, everyone. And I hope you enjoy a wonderful day. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.